You really thought, nah, there's no host. They're just these devices that are going to talk to you today. Look, that is never going to happen. Don't ever get depressed. I'm never going to go away. I'm always going to be with you. But the amount of stuff we have on the show today, it's like our own lab happening out here. The number of things we have. We have the brand new iMac, and this is a 27-inch with the 5K monitor. Believe me, this looks absolutely, there's only one word for it, delicious. From the form factor to the way it looks, the way it behaves, the performance. And then once again, did I mention 5K monitor, all built in. And I've got two cameras from Panasonic, and these are the two cameras that I think literally all the professional, the prosumers, the consumer hobbyist, and wedding photographers have been waiting for. And I'm going to tell you things about these two cameras, including doing something very experimental, which is we'll actually shoot a whole segment. You'll see the difference between what you're seeing right now and when we shoot on one of these cameras it is i wouldn't go as far as night and day but okay let's say uh, morning and evening something along the lines of that okay and then we've got the brand new fitbits and a whole lot more let's get started so much to show you bye on the biggest unboxing on the show till date we open up the 27 inch imac which is a beauty and it's even a beast there is now a Fitbit for every wrist and we show you the new fitness trackers launched by the company and take them out for a run. And we also get clicking with Panasonic Lumix S-Series cameras and they're about to change your photography experience. So before we get started and we do our biggest unboxing we've ever done, I mean literally have you ever thought that we do an unboxing of a box this giant size? So we've got lots of very interesting stories. Don't move, don't breathe, don't do anything. I mean, just pay absolute tunnel vision attention. First, we'll start off with all the news from the world of gadgets. With the Lok Sabha elections underway, social media giants like Facebook and Twitter are ramping up fact-checking measures for a fair election. Twitter says that it will introduce a new reporting feature with which users can flag any fake news, rumours or false claims within the social platform. This has been done for the Indian Lok Sabha elections as well as the upcoming European Parliament elections from April 29. So our biggest unboxing and we're getting started and of course the first thing that you will get is this. I'm sure most of you familiar with the iMac world know exactly what I'm going to show you. This is of course the keyboard. Absolutely stunning. I love this keyboard. I think it should actually win every single award for the best keyboard ever. It comes with the mouse. It comes with some of the other documentation. Let me show you the mouse also. The mouse is also a real piece of art in every which way. So we've got these two things. And now, ah, okay, now the, this just the thermocol took so much of my strength. Now comes the actual product. Let's see if I can actually pull this one out. Remember, this is the biggest unboxing ever. Ta-da! Oh, it's gone the other way around. Now I'll show it to you. Here we go. Are you ready for this? I mean, there should be nothing that comes in front of this. When I said this is beautiful, was I joking? I mean, just look at this. This is perfection from every angle, every side, the viewing angle, the way you can change it. And remember, it's all built into this. There's nothing else you add. Put in the keyboard right here, put in the mouse, right or left-handed, whatever is your dexterity, and you're ready. Time now for our review. Yes, you saw the biggest unboxing on the show till date and the result is in front of our eyes. This sleek beauty which does inspire some awe owing to its design, specs and price is the new 27-inch iMac. Apple has updated its iMac line with up to 8 core Intel 9th generation processors for the first time and powerful Vega graphics options, delivering dramatic increases in both computing and graphics performance. While there is a 21 inch iMac with a 4K display also on offer, we're currently drooling over this 27 inch beast with a stunning 5K display which has made its way to our studio. So let's dive in and tell you what makes this iMac special and different from the predecessor. Should you upgrade? And can it be a good substitute for the new iMac Pro, which costs more than 10 lakh rupees for a 256 GB RAM variant? We have with us the 27-inch iMac 2019 with Retina 5K display, which starts at a whopping 1,69,900 rupees. Design 
Well, not much has changed in the iMac design philosophy since the desktop was introduced in 2012. But we're assuming Apple feels, why fix it if it ain't broke? An era of technology has passed by since 2012 and believe us, Apple has created a machine equipped for today. It looks sleek and makes for an eye-catching all-in-one computer which comes in an aluminium and glass enclosure with a 5mm thin profile. We would have liked fewer bezels and a smaller bottom chin in the age of bezel-less displays. You get a keyboard and mouse in the same colour tone giving your workspace an uncluttered look. Apple says this beast is for both consumers and professionals and it seems to have the necessary props for all. Connectivity is achieved with four USB-A ports, two Thunderbolt 3 Type-C ports, an SD card slot, a 3.5mm headphone jack and a gigabit Ethernet jack. These are at the back though so you may have to lean in to connect. Display The 27-incher features a gorgeous 5K Retina display that cranks up to 500 nits of brightness. We found the display almost mesmerizing and the detail will come in hand for those indulging in professional edits since you can now edit 4K video at full resolution. Performance The performance jump is spectacular in the new iMacs, giving them abilities similar to those of the iMac Pro. Well, almost. We get up to 8 core Intel 9th generation processors which result in smoother, faster performance and no lags while heavy-duty multitasking, whether you're editing or gaming. The processors on the 27-inch iMac now deliver 2.4 times faster performance than its predecessor. But graphics is where this beast comes to life. The 27-incher is equipped with Radeon Pro Vega graphics, which claim to deliver up to 50% faster graphics performance. While we tested these out in gaming and were impressed, professional editors and gamers will love this. And the machine didn't heat up owing to its cooling efficiency, a territory dominated by the iMac Pro till now. Interface. The new iMacs come with macOS Mojave which is ideal for professionals and yet is easy to get used to even for consumers or newbie content creators. Sound The speakers perform well and we wouldn't recommend attaching accessories since we like the uncluttered look. All in all, the new 27-inch iMac carries considerable appeal owing to its processor and graphics capabilities which can compete with an entry-level iMac Pro. The performance scores high and the display is ideal for content creators who may want an all-in-one computer without spending a king's ransom. So that then was our first top story. We're moving on to our next big one. This may be even bigger because I've got cameras. I mean, it's a king's ransom worth of cameras. So what happened is this. Panasonic did this international launch of this, the S1 and the S1R, both much, much awaited. This is Panasonic doing many, many world firsts in this, including the fact that these work in freezing temperatures, you can charge it with a USB-C. These are fantastic, you know, uh, their collaboration now with uh, lens makers like Leica and others, Sigma. So lots and lots of things in these two cameras, and I'll take you through all of that. But we did something very interesting. So I've got one Panasonic S1, I've got one Panasonic S1R, and all we've also got one more Panasonic S1. And the reason is that we're going to give it out to a professional photographer, and everything we shoot with him, he'll actually switch to using an S1 camera to shoot that entire thing because the video capability of these cameras is above and beyond. In fact, I'm going to give you a small little example. This is me on our typical TV camera. And this is me now. We've just switched right now to the Panasonic camera. So you can actually make out right now the big difference because that's the capability, what it can do in 4K. Now we can't bring you 4K because it comes to you in SD, but even then just look at the difference in the color, the, the kind of gradients you're getting, the kind of detailing you're getting is incredible. So lots about these cameras that we'll talk about, lots that the professional photographer will talk about, but the most interesting part of it is that we've gone out and done this shoot to try and see what all we can get out of it. The most interesting part, starting from right now, as I've done this, we're switching this entire segment to be shot only on a Panasonic. Full frame. Mirrorless. High resolution mode like no other. While all these technical terms may sound like gibberish to all, to us they lead to an uncompromised photography experience. On the show today we have this black beauty from Panasonic's new Lumix S series, the S1, which comes with a 24 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor and it is based on the L mount standard. This means that the cameras come with L-mount interchangeable lenses and alliance between Leica camera, Sigma and Panasonic which allows photographers to mix and match any of the three manufacturers 
full frame cameras with any lens from each other's product portfolios. The company will introduce 42 more lenses which support L mount in the next two years. And these cameras come with video recording capabilities of 4K up to 60 FPS. One of the big USPs of the S series is the image quality you get with its high resolution mode and of course then there are added advantages like great image stabilization, rich color reproduction and rich gradation. For a professional photographer these are assets. Let's tell you the price before anything else. The S1 can be yours for rupees 2,67,990 with the 24105mm f4 lens. And another feature to write home about is the HLG photo mode. Panasonic has introduced a whole new style of imaging which provides a wider dynamic range to reproduce light and shadow with more natural contrast. So you can get crisp and clear images with great detail without any glare. An industry first when it comes to stills. The company also launched the S1R which integrates a 47.3 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor with a powerful high resolution mode which enables 187 megapixel ultra high precision photos with a pixel shift technology. This one is priced at Rs 3,67,990 with a 24105mm f4 lens. While the Lumix S1 is aimed at a wider audience, the S1R is aimed at professionals. And yes, you heard it from Rajiv, all these visuals you see on screen have been shot on an S1 as well. And the results are remarkable. Now the Lumix S series promises a lot, high speed, high precision autofocus and a lot more. So let's ask someone who spends hours behind the lens to capture beauty. And let's find out if this camera delivers on promises. Meet Fezan Patel, a professional lifestyle photographer from New Delhi who divides his time between high-end weddings, fashion shoots and travel. He has been playing with the S1 and its lens. Let's ask him what he thinks. Hi, my name is Fezan Patel and I'm a photographer based in New Delhi. And uh, this is the Panasonic S1 with me right now. And uh, I've been using this particular camera since a while now. This one's a 24 megapixel uh, sensor. And uh, whatever content that you're seeing right now is shot on the Panasonic Lumix series. Now coming to the design aspect of this camera. It's quite ruggedly made. Uh, it's uh, made of magnesium alloy cast. And it feels really good in the hands. I would, this is something that uh, nature photographers are going to love it because of the ruggedness. It's, it's uh, dust resistant, uh, splash resistant, and also it can survive uh, in minus 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, now looking at the build again, uh, it's built more of more like a DSLR, feels more like a DSLR because of its ruggedness and less of a mirrorless camera. But I'm loving it because uh, everything feels good, the buttons are in the right places, uh, my, my fingers fall exactly and naturally into the place where the shutter button is placed. So yeah, I am liking the design as of now. Now coming to the video aspect of this uh, particular camera, it shoots uh, 4K at 60 FPS and Full HD at 180 FPS. Also, it has an artificial intelligence within the camera, which lets you detect people, faces, and also animals, even when they're not facing at the camera. Another fantastic thing about this particular camera is it supports dual card slot. Uh, one takes the SD card, and one uh, X takes in the XQD slot, which is really good because I love shooting in both the cards, just in case if one of the cards goes corrupt. Another, uh, the go another good thing about this particular thing is, uh, for cinematographers, I can shoot on a stretch without the system getting heated up. Another good thing that I liked about this camera was I could charge it using my USB Type-C charger. So it's one way good, I don't have to carry multiple uh, uh, chargers and cables with me. So just my mobile phone charger is good enough to charge this particular camera. Unlike other mirrorless cameras in the market, this one supports DFD autofocus, which, uh, and when you compare the other cameras, they use a face detection autofocus. The benefit of this particular uh, autofocus system is that it's much sharper and also faster than the face detection one. This camera also supports five axis dual image stabilization, which is fantastic when you're shooting videos and also pictures in a very low light condition. Another of my favorite uh, feature of this particular camera is the high resolution mode. Now this, in this particular feature, what it does is it clicks eight pictures and stitches them together and giving an output of a 96 megapixel picture, which can be used both as a RAW as well as a JPEG. So this is something which is very good for nature photographers. This camera supports a very big battery, which is good for 600 shots per charge. Now, considering the feature that I've mentioned about, uh, this particular camera is something that I would recommend for nature photographers, landscape photographers, wedding photographers, and also fashion photographers to a certain extent. Along with the camera, I got to use the 24-105mm lens, which gives me a wide shot as well. At the same time, it works as a zoom lens. And the best part about it, it supports macro shooting as well. Since it lacks the, the swirl screen, it's not something that I would recommend for vloggers.
But before our verdict, let's hear what the company has to say about the USB of this camera. But do note, we're back to regular programming for this part of the story and this is not shot on an S1. It is actually shot on a normal camera for you to see the stark difference. Now, you've been using these cameras for a while. I haven't had that opportunity as yet. So maybe you're going to educate me right now. Many, many different areas like precision, autofocus, uh, the fact that you've got like a lenses, Sigma lenses, uh, you now have a, a converter also, that, uh, an adapter for other lenses. What is the part that you personally like the most? Using it as a person that actually you would do it as a prosumer or a hobbyist. So I believe that two aspects of this product have really created a lot of uh, uh, sort of positivity in my thought process of considering that how this product is going to go forward. The first is uh, the sheer performance. And though the value is slightly incremental, but I think small is the new big now. So that's one. And second is uh, it's really easy to use. There are so many buttons which we have created and the size of the body has become slightly larger and bulkier. But I believe that uh, there's a huge trade-off the kind of value which uh, more number of buttons, more connectivity in the product to create seamless experience for consumer. I think there's so much of value which comes with this product. In our brief time with the S1, we love the image and video quality and would describe it as nearly perfect and a joy to use. The S series could well be the full frame cameras that we've been waiting for at a hefty price tag, of course. Take a quick break right now on the show. When we come back, I'm going to show you some Fitbits and some other things that are still to come. back to regular programming which means this is now not being shot on a Panasonic S1. We're now moving on to the new Fitbits that have come out. The Fitbit Versa which I'm already wearing. This is a very interesting one because the, the body of this and as well as the strap is exactly the same color. Very nicely put together. You can see it right here also. Then they've come up with this, the Fitbit Inspire HR and of course the Fitbit Inspire. Now of course the story comes from this that the new Fitbits are here. People are excited but are they? The last time also as we actually did review a Fitbit, our big question at the end of it all was, why would you buy a Fitbit now? Of course, there are reasons. I mean, this is the company that started it all. This is the company that actually led from the front. But off late, what's the latest innovation you've seen from Fitbit that really sets their device apart for you to say, I need this on my wrist right now? That's a question that's really going to beg an answer even after we finish reviewing this. There was a time when every wrist had a Fitbit on it, but with a spate of smartwatches and fitness trackers to choose from, Fitbit is fighting to regain position as a number one fitness tracker. And the company has launched three new Fitbits. The Fitbit Versa Lite for Rs 15,999, the Fitbit Inspire HR for Rs 8,999 and the Fitbit Inspire for Rs 6,999. While the Fitbit HR offers 24-7 heart rate tracking, automatic activity, exercise and sleep stage tracking in a slim design which is targeted at women presumably, the Fitbit Inspire serves as an entry-level band which is easy to use and has a decent battery life for anyone just starting their fitness journey. For this review, we will be running around with the priciest of the lot on the wrist, the Fitbit Versa Lite. Good looks are of extreme importance if you're putting something on your wrist and the Fitbit Versa Lite comes with decent looks, we would say. It is a bit reminiscent of the Apple Watch and the Lite Edition is the company's most lightweight smartwatch yet. Even for small wrists which struggle with bulky watches, this one sits easily on the wrist. And the touch of blue looks very elegant. Make sure to pair the Fitbit with your Fitbit app. There are clock faces to choose from, apps to customize and even a Fitbit coach for more personalized workouts. We also like the in-depth analysis of your daily activity and the different clock faces to choose from. On the features front, the watch claims to be swim-proof but we wouldn't advise you to jump into the pool just yet. We were also disappointed to see that there is no swimming mode at this price point in a market when budget fitness trackers are offering more for lesser. But you don't have to worry in case you spill a little water on it or get drenched in the rain. The touchscreen comes with a full-color display with the same resolution as the original Fitbit Versa. We ran with it outdoors and found it pretty easy to view the stats. 
The display performs well. You will only notice the bezels if you use a very colorful clock face. In a black one like this, these are hardly noticeable. The interface is easy to use though regular Apple Watch and Wear OS users may miss the interface that they are accustomed to. There is only one little button which acts as a home button and a navigator and this can be used to access different functions within the menu. Simplicity is key to the Fitbit. The Fitbit Versa Lite comes with features like automatic activity tracking, a 24-7 pure pulse heart rate calculator which was pretty accurate when we compared it to the results on the pulse oximeter. We monitored the heart rate during a workout and let's just say our subject needed to run more often. You can also download third-party apps like Social Fitness Network Strava, which is very difficult to find in Wear OS. The new additions include goal-based workouts where you can enter calorie goals in advance. There is a 4-day plus battery life which gives it an edge over the Apple Watch and some Wear OS contenders. We did, however, miss the guided on-screen workouts which are found in the more expensive Fitbits. You get the usual stats in all workouts, calories burned, heart rate and connected GPS. So we wouldn't recommend this if you're looking for a comprehensive fitness analysis. We do like the breathing exercises which are very reminiscent of the Apple Watch. These are great if you want to relax. And if you need a fitness band to give you a map of your fitness journey without holding your hand through it, the Fitbit Versa Lite might be it. That then is the show for this week, but lots of very interesting things coming up, including with this iMac, what else can you do? Some accessories for it, some hard drives for it, and a whole lot more. Big stories coming up next week. See you then.